Hi friends, welcome to Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. Today is day 10 of my 14 Days of Love series. And today I'm going to be showing you two, we're gonna make a total of three cards, but I'm going to be showing you two fun folds. And um, I think you're really going to enjoy them. And the featured product suite is the Perennial Lavender Suite from the 2024 uh, January to April mini catalog. I'm excited, so let's get started right away. Today, I'll be showing you how to make two different types of fun fold cards, and I'll be making a total of three cards for this day 10 demonstration. I'll be using both of the bundles from the Perennial Lavender Suite, Painted Lavender and Perennial Postage, awesome stamp sets with wonderful die sets. For the first card, I'm going to start with a card base of five and a half by four and a quarter inches of pretty peacock cardstock. Then I have a piece of crumb cake that measures four and three quarters by seven inches. Four and three quarters by seven inches. I want to double check that. Yes, four and three quarters by seven inches. And I've scored at three and a half on the long side. And I'll just give that fold a nice crease with my bone folder. I have a basic white cardstock that measures four and a half by three and a quarter inches for the inside of this crumb cake card base. So now I'm going to fold this closed and I'm going to adhere it to my piece of pretty, pe pretty peacock cardstock. I'm gonna center it right in the middle there. Because the pretty peacock measures five and a half by four and a quarter inches, it is the same as our standard A2 size card. Next, I've cut a piece of the Perennial Lavender Designer, Designer Series paper, which measures the same as the basic white, four and a half by three and a quarter inches four and a half by three and a quarter inches. And I'm going to adhere that to a piece of pretty peacock that measures four and five eighths by three and three eighths. And that will give me just a nice narrow mat uh, or border of the pretty peacock showing. And I'll adhere this to the front of my crumb cake card base. Next, I'm going to stamp a sentiment and die cut it. So I'm actually going to stamp three the sentiment three times because um, then I'm only stamping and die cutting once. And I'll have all of those ready for the three cards I'll be making with you today. Plus that will save a little bit of time doing it this way. And I try to be respectful of your time. So, I'm first going to cut this white one. This is one of the dies from the perennial postage bundle. And you probably can see why they called it perennial postage. The dies, many of those dies, most of those dies resemble the 
um, edges of our US postage stamps. So there's the one. I stamped the sentiment with gorgeous grape ink on white and gorgeous gray ink on Highland Heather cardstock. So these will be for cards two and three. I'm going to do something a little bit different on this last one that I want you to see. This is one of the dies that comes in the perennial postage die set. All it does is emboss the design. There's like a, a butterfly and some little stitch marks and then the wavy lines. Um, it only embosses. It does not cut. So what I'm going to do is use both of these at the same time. I want to make sure my direction is correct. And the purpose of this one is to um, give the look of a canceled stamp. You know, when it goes through the U.S. Postal Service, um, they put a, a mark or a stamp on your letters or your envelopes to say that the stamp, the postage stamp has been canceled, it's been used. So take a look at this, isn't that fun? Now one thing you can do, I'm not going to do it for this demonstration, you could even put some ink on here with your brayer or just um, drag it into your ink pad and that way when you do it, you'll get some of the ink along all of those embossed designs or layers. Okay, I think that is, I'm all set with that now. So I'll put my mini stamp and cut in emboss machine away. So now I'm going to add my sentiment and then decorate my card. I'm going to add the sentiment to my lower right hand corner of that card base. Notice that I put the dimensionals towards the center of this. The reason for that is I've die cut some of these um, sprigs of leaves. Actually, I've got one and one and a half. Okay, so I I actually die cut two, but I used the top of this one on my sample and I'm using the bottom of that same one for this card. But I'm just going to dab a little bit of multi-purpose glue. I use this very sparingly. And because I put my dimensionals near the center, I'm able to just tuck these sprigs under my postage stamp sentiment. I'm going to do the same thing with this, just a tiny bit of multi-purpose glue. And I'm gonna tuck this right up here. And then I have some of the purple fine shimmer gems. Uh, there are, let me pull that out. There are actually three colors in the package. You get a Highland Heather um, or a light purple, a gorgeous grape, and then this could either be Berry Burst or Blackberry Bliss. It works well with both of those colors, really. And I'm going to add some of these among the leaves. Here, I'll be adding three. Typically, when we add embellishments like this or we do flower arranging, we're working in odd numbers. Let's see, where do I want? I'll put it, I'll put it here, I think. 
So that's my finished card. Isn't it pretty? Let's do one more thing for this card. The only thing we stamped here was the sentiment. So let's go ahead and stamp the envelope. I'm going to, let's see, where are my stamps? Here we go. I'm going to stamp the stems first. I'm going to use a bit of scrap paper or grid paper because I may be stamping off the envelope a little bit. And while that getting ink on my glass mat does not hurt anything, I won't have to do any cleanup right away since I want to move on to the other two cards I want to make for you in this demonstration. So I've stamped that bunch of stems with Lost Lagoon. And then I'm going to stamp this bunch of lavender with Highland Heather ink. Okay. Put this right at the top. And then I'm going to add a little more dimension by stamping this additional small detailed stamp with Gorgeous Grape on top of that Highland Heather. And it's just, I'm not matching anything up. It's just kind of a random thing here. But do you see how pretty that looks with two shades of the purple in there? And let's do one more thing before I close up the Lost Lagoon ink. The um, Painted Lavender stamp set comes with these cute butterflies. And you actually can stamp both butterflies at once because they're on the same stamp. So we'll put that inside. So if they get a little surprise of stamping on the inside plus a beautiful envelope. A decorated envelope basically shows people that there's something extra special on the inside of that envelope. Now I'm ready to show you a second fun fold card that I like a lot. I'm starting with a piece of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock. This is pretty pink I'm using. On one end, and this will be two card bases. On one end, I'm going to score at three inches. And then I'm going to slide this across. And I'm going to put the right edge of my cardstock right at the one inch mark to the right of the cutting and scoring groove. And here, whoops, I said one inch. It should be one and a quarter. So I scored it three inch on the left side and one and a quarter on the right side. And now I'm going to turn my cardstock so it's now in the horizontal or landscape position. And I've got my left edge at five and a half inches. And these become my two card bases. So I'm going to give each of these a nice burnished score line on each side. I should have pulled out my silicone mat to put underneath while I'm scoring and then you don't hear that loud clanking when the bone folder hits the glass mat. So that's the basis of my card base for this fun fold card base. Let's start by putting the insides of our cards. I've got two pieces of basic white 
that measure five and a quarter by four inches. I'm going to do a little stamping on the inside of each of these. So I'm going to do that first. First, I'm going to stamp with Pretty Peacock. Just gonna stamp the stem. Okay, and actually let's stamp the envelopes at the very same time. So I've got my two envelopes for these cards. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Stamp the stem. It's kind of tall, so it might go down a little bit. And pretty peacock on the left side of my envelopes. Next, I'm going to stamp with Highland Heather. And again, I'm going to be stamping both Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. But this time, I'm only stamping like a single sprig of the lavender, not a whole bunch, like on the first card, the envelope for the first card. So that's Highland Heather. Need to come down a little bit more to put it on the envelope. This is a photo, oops, photopolymer stamp set. So you may want to um, use a silicone craft sheet or a Stampin' Pierce mat when you're stamping. That just ensures that our stamped images cut out a little better. Close this up. Notice it's a pretty simple color palette that I've used. I've used some Lost Lagoon, Pretty Peacock, Gorgeous Grape, and Highland Heather. And these are all colors that can be found in the Perennial Lavender Designer Series papers. In addition to some other colors like um, Fresh Freesia and Berry Burst and Blackberry Bliss. So it's really a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, color palette. So now I'm ready. I'm going to close this up just to be sure I don't end up with ink everywhere. Now I'm ready to adhere each of these to the inside of my card. I don't always stamp on the inside, um, but I really wanted to for these two fun fold cards. Look how the purples just pop off that white and against the pretty peacock. I love it. And I'll do the same with the second card. These two cards are going to be very similar, but different enough. And here's where some of the difference comes in. I have cut two pieces of designer series paper. These measure, uh, let me think, five and a quarter inches by three and three quarters. Yes, five and a quarter by three and three quarters. My glass mat has um, dimensions imperial dimensions along the left and bottom, metric along the top and right. So when you see me doing this, I'm usually just double checking my measurements, okay? I've So they're the same, they're cut from the same sheet, five and a quarter by three and three quarter inches. I'm going to put right sides together. And then I'm going to have the left edge at the two and three quarter inch mark, and then the right edge is at the one inch mark on the opposite side. And I'll cut those. And 
The Stampin' Up! Paper Trimmer does a great job of cutting two pieces of designer series paper at once. I've even cut three sheets at a time, but definitely two. Now here's where the difference in the two cards come. I'm just going to mix these up. All right. This is the mix part. We had the match. This is the mix, mix and match. So now I'm ready to adhere these to each panel of my card front. Again, this way I'm making two cards at once. They're the same design, same products, but I end up making two different cards. I love that about our designer series papers, um, that they're printed on two sides. So that means we get double the choices of papers and patterns to use. Okay, see that? Super simple, right? Okay, now I've got, I'm gonna use this gorgeous grape postage shape, postage, sh postage stamp shape. That's a mouthful to say. And then I'm using the Pretty Peacock one for the card on the right. <clears throat> I'm using the sentiment on the white cardstock to layer onto that gorgeous grape cardstock. Trying to get that straight and centered. I'm a little off. Actually, let's do something different. I don't have any dimensionals on this card yet. So let's do that right now. What's a card without dimensionals, right? <laughs> no, nah. it's okay not to have dimensionals on every card. I guess I just don't, uh, don't do that very often. And then the sentiment that is stamped on the Highland Heather will be adhered to the Pretty Peacock postage stamp shape. Now I'm going to add these and, and they're going to be centered on my card, centered left to right, but it will overlap that opening and that is A-OK. -okay. That is all right. So what I'm going to do is be careful about where I'm putting my adhesive on each of these. It's okay for me to, um, I'm going to have it on the left, and it's okay for me to go beyond the halfway mark, but I want to make sure that it's not going all the way to the right end, that it would stick to that right flap. The other thing I'm going, is I'm going to do is kind of estimate about where I'm going to adhere that, and then I'm going to put some adhesive along this part of that large flap. That way I know I've got adhesive only where I need it, but it will cover the entire area of the shape that I'm wanting to adhere on that left panel. I think that looks good. Let's hear that down. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Here's that um, adhesive I put along that edge of that right panel. So now you can see the adhesive goes right up to that edge and underneath the rest of the layers, but not beyond. So I'm safe. All right, let's, we've got our envelopes here. Oh, we forgot the second part of the stamping on the envelopes. 
I did not stamp the gorgeous grape on those envelopes. So let's do that now. There. See the difference? It just gives it a little more interest, a little more dimension to our, I can even do it a second time if I want. Okay. There's the difference between the two. And you can play with that. Play with different shades of the purples and um, berry colors. Let's finish off our cards with some of the fine shimmer gems. I'm going to use my take your pick tool to pick these up and place them exactly where I want them. This time I'll be using the um, gorgeous grape. Well, let's see here. I think, I, yes, I use gorgeous grape on each of them. So for this one with the white, um, basic white cardstock, I'm going to use, actually, let's use the light color here. So that way we get a variation of purples. We've got the gorgeous grape and then the Highland Heather in the shimmer gems. Okay, so that's that one. And then I'm going to place my um, gems a little bit differently for the second card. Whoops, what happened to it? I dropped it somewhere. Oh, it's on my finger. Did you catch that? It's on my finger. So, and so often, now these have large and small. So often I use up my small embellishments first. So as I was making samples for this video, I thought I'm going to challenge myself and use only large ones on one of these cards. So I'm using only large fine shimmer gems for this card. And I think it works. I think it looks great. And they kind of pop out from the all the um, florals in the background. Notice that I used five. On my other cards, I used three which is perfectly fine. Three is an odd number. But on this card, I wanted to um, use more embellishments and kind of spread them out a bit more over the entire card front. So that takes care of my cards for day 10 of my series. Okay, and I love the sentiment. Don't you love the sentiment? You mean the world to me. What a special and different way to say I love you, right? I think I mentioned in one of the other um, videos in this series that there are lots of different ways to say I love you. My mom always used, it didn't matter how old I was. It didn't matter that I was in my 30s with two kids of my own and all that. And um she would always say when I was going home, I was walking out the front door and she would yell, be careful. And one time I said back, mom, I'm always careful. And she said, Mary, you never stop being a mom, which I find to be so true now that I have adult children. I get what she was talking about. But think about that. Be careful was her way of saying, I love you every time I left her house. You mean the world to me. Another way of saying I love you. Um, you've been on my mind. Another way to say I love you. So let's, I want to bring in this perennial postage stamp again so that you can see all of the different ways here. You're simply marvelous. Big hugs. I can't thank you enough. You are loved beyond measure. Thank you for your friendship. These are all ways of saying I love you which is awesome, in my opinion. All right. Um, thanks for joining me for my day 10 demonstration. 
of my 14 Days of Love series. And um, we've got a few days left, four days of demonstrations left. So I hope you will, um, hope that you are looking forward to those. If you missed any of the previous videos in this series, they are on my YouTube channel, Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe, or better yet, go to my website and blog, stampinpeace.com. And there, not only will you get the video, you'll get cutting and scoring dimensions, um, a link to see all of the products I used, etc. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy stamping.